Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm Talia Raffaele, Dr. Talia Raffaele from Curtin University's um, Sustainability Policy Institute. And I'm Dr. Professor Dora Marinova from Curtin University's Sustainability Policy Institute. And together with Talia, we're the editors of the book that was published this year by IGI Global entitled Impact of Mid-Consumption on Health and Environmental Sustainability. Which is actually, although we are based in Perth, it's a collection of chapters written globally by people from all over the world, experts in the field. The book, you can see, it's actually quite thick and contains a number of chapters that are covering issues starting from climate change and weather, going through issues in relation to diet and human well-being, society and politics, uh, and it concludes with um, a vision as to what we want to see, the change that we want to see, and how we want uh, to contribute to making these changes. And ultimately, I guess it's an appeal to individuals to think about some of the things that are said in here, and through understanding and recognition to consider becoming part of the change they want to see in the world. Or maybe we should explain a little bit why That's it is such an, important, idea. such an important topic. Um, there has been a lot of research done around the impact of excessive meat consumption on human health. And the World Health Organization uh, last year categorized uh, meat as potentially carcinogenic substance uh, in the same group as tobacco and Weed killer. In you fact, know. they classified um, processed meat as a definite carcinogen that the evidence clearly proves. There's no question mark anymore around the evidence. Um, sufficient, there were over 800 studies commissioned, I believe, proving that red meat is a carcinogen and processed meat in particular will cause cancer. So there is a lot of health evidence, and the health evidence has been around for quite a long time. The, what is new and what has emerged uh, more recently is the fact that meat has a very heavy environmental footprint. And again, Dora, you're right. But like with the health thing, we've known it for a very long time. But people are only starting to focus on it now as climate change becomes um, exponentially um, destructive. And now people are starting to look at ways to mitigate climate change. And previously, meat was left off the agenda. And people are looking just at alternative energies and stuff. But now they've started to realize that diet and dietary considerations and choices are as critical as anything else. Correct. Uh, the issue about the impact of the livestock sector on uh, climate change, for example, is not singled out in any of the policy papers that we've seen around climate change. But despite this, if you look at some of the assessments of the contribution of the various sectors, uh, livestock comes as a much bigger contributor than any other sector, and that includes the energy sector, that includes transport, uh, sector, transport buildings, housing, ports, yep. industries. Mm -hmm. So it is... Commercial... Uh, what do they say? It is the elephant in the room, but it's nobody the room. seems to notice it. And it's so frustrating for us because we are sustainability practitioners and we live in a world where people should particularly be aware of this. And if we can't and our colleagues can't acknowledge that this is an important part of the sustainability discourse, how can the rest of the world be expected to understand? And this gives us to the point, who is the audience for this book? It's yeah. actually... Yeah. It's and actually, why was the book written? And why was the book written? It's actually meant to be for everybody. It's starting from individuals who care about their own personal health and the health of the environment, going to policymakers, going to politicians, to governments, people who work on dietary uh, guidelines, dietary regulations, people who assess what the impact of the various economic sectors are on climate change and want to keep climate change within uh, the healthy, safe, 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 yes, to operating, levels. operating levels. So everybody should be reading this this book. And some of it will be very um, confronting. Some of it's not as confronting, but 
it's almost like if one knows that something is dangerous, you're empowered to make different choices, whether that's dangerous individually or whether that's dangerous intergenerationally, so for your children or your grandchildren, or whether that's dangerous for those living on the planet with you at the moment. It's better to be empowered with knowledge and then to be able to make choices that you feel comfortable making. That's really a very important thing to bear in mind because this book has been able to bring together so many different perspectives from different parts of the world as well. Surprisingly, we were also contacted by uh, people who have read the book uh, and who uh, found it that it was a revealing experience for them. So there are, because Talia and I are so deep into this material, so we know and we've known this for a while, but people are still finding this a surprise and they're still discovering a completely new world that makes them reconsider the way they live, the, what they eat, uh, and, and it's something that probably can change your life and your attitudes and uh, and the way you relate to to meat. Interestingly enough, Edward Quantro, um, who is one of the Quantro family, the alcoholic um, pleasure drink Quantro, has initiated a, a global, I believe it's the most prestigious um, foodie um, award uh, in the world um, called the Gourmand Awards. And he personally contacted Dora and I and asked us to please allow him to submit the book into the sustainability um, uh, judging section of the Contra Awards. So we should luck. luck. So we A, we should have luck, but B, what, what, what that was saying is that even people who love their meat and people who really love their food are recognizing that maybe the price is, is really high and needs to be quantified and qualified in a broader context. And the book in, in no way makes an appeal for people to cease producing or consuming meat. It simply asks people to consider the consequences on themselves, their personal health, and indirectly and directly on the environment when making whatever dietary choices they choose to make. Okay, bye for now. See you soon. Enjoy reading. Mm -hmm.